my people. This week now, na so so first us kiyamu issue na just the trend. He want drag Peter Bigo uh, DSS. <laughs> Our best presenter Rufai and uh, Doctor Abati. They don't break down the things who they happen about Festus Kiamu and uh, Peter B saga where they go on now with the trend. Mona come here with it, Rufai talk. Rufai give you your view. He advise them, shall let's say this APC. They know I use the ITC Rufai. Mona watch the video. We did expect that the drama had only just begun mm -hmm. post um, the announcement of the winner of the presidential election on 25th of February. And we have seen a number of things begin to unfold as the days go by. One of this, again, is in the interview granted, or at, at first of all, starting with the petition written by the Minister of State for Labor and Productivity, um, Mr. Festus Keamo SAN, and of course, his following interview, um, TV interview, based on, his petition is based according to what he wrote to the DSS on statements made by the vice, uh, vice presidential candidate of the Liberal Party, uh, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, and of course, uh, he also joined the presidential candidate of the Liberal Party, Mr. Peter Obi, in this complaint or petition to the DSS. I'd like to read the opening statement of the, D of the petition to the DSS made by Mr. Fessos Keamo. First of all, I must say that he said he's written this petition in his personal capacity as an individual, um, as a concerned citizen of Nigeria. That's how he ended the petition. But he opens it by saying that I write to the full realization that in a, in a post-election period such as this, there is a need to soothe frayed nerves, lower the temperature, and begin the healing process. Let me end here for a few, few seconds. Now, one of the things you've heard, especially from the APC at this time, is the healing process. This talk about healing, or oh, let's now begin to work together and come together. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because it speaks to what the actions of uh, Mr. Fessos Keamo. And what a number of people have said is that the APC asked the Labour Party and other aggrieved parties, the PDP inclusive, to go to court if they didn't agree with the election outcome. Now, this message of, um, this message of healing, hence him saying that the statements made by Yusuf Dati Ahmed is incendiary, therefore we should be looking towards um, unity. But people have asked as well that, can healing occur without justice? Is it mutually exclusive to heal and also to seek justice? I know that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the statements exactly, but it was important because he started his statement that way. Because in his way, he was making a case for why he believes the DSS should investigate as it could incite people, you know, um, young and old in Nigeria to, you know, violence if, if, if possible. Now, I'll give a little example and then I'll pass it on because I'm sure that Dr. Anne Rufai would also um, speak to this. But when we talk about justice and healing, it's, I'll give an example of a parent, you know, two children, one has stopped stolen a pot, you know, the other's um, maybe possession, and then says, don't report to, um, you know, just let's keep it quiet for the peace of this family, just let's move on. Yes, the peace of the family is very important, but it is also important that to enable or to teach the other person a lesson, it's important so that it doesn't occur again, that the other person is able to seek, get some form of justice, very important. In the same breath, Fessus Kayamo, Mr. Fessus Kayamo, in the interview he did on, an, on another TV station, was doing almost exactly that which he was accusing Mr. Yusuf Bati Ahmed of doing in terms of speaking out. Why is he saying that it was not a, the um, president elect is not constitutionally recognized and so on? Because he also preempted the justice of the Supreme Court judge, um, judges by making statements, not just at this interview, but in other um, fora where he said that the, their case is baseless. The Supreme Court is going to throw the, court, um, the case away. So just to mention that at this time, it is important that spokespeople like Mr. Festus Keamo and the spokespersons from the Labour Party are careful with the words that they say. Yes, it is important to seek justice, but we must remember that it's the people that we, they seek to serve that they could, you know, ultimately do um, a disservice to. But a number of things. Number one, all politicians, all stakeholders, all parties to the general election in realize that the elections are over. Matters have been taken to court. Nobody should instigate violence. Nobody should try to do anything that will sound or look like incitement, because that is not the way to go. And the various parties, the major parties, four political parties, 
and the APC having gone to court on different sides of the spectrum with regard to those elections. They should know already that the petitions haven't been filed. The matter is already subjudiced. And so they must refrain from making uh, you know, statements that will be prejudicial uh, to the outcome of the process in court. That's very important. The second thing is the petition by Festus Kiyamu. It's titled, Petition Against Mr. Ubi and Dati Baba Ahmed for making incendiary comments and claims capable of causing an insurrection or rebellion against the government of Nigeria and the duly elected president-elect. Thursday, March 23, 23. And of course, this is the receipt, you know, uh, a copy of the received uh, petition. Well, the point to note here is that Professor Skeyamo is insisting that he has had to write this petition because of statements made by Mr. Peter B and Dati Ahmed. What we know is that Mr. Peter B sometime last week made it clear that he will not subscribe to an end INEC hashtag end INEC protest. He will not subscribe to an hashtag end democracy protest. He made those two points clear. And that the option that is available to him is to go to court, which he has done, because he has faith in the judiciary. So, to that extent, Mr. Peter Obi has made very clear his choice in the matter. And he, on this program, he made a distinction between the Labour Party and the obedient movement, which he says is larger than the Labour Party. And sometimes there may be elements in the obedient movement saying certain things that may not really be the position of the party. As for the uh, vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, well, Kiyamo is saying he appeared on television. And he said, if Ashwajibola Ahmed Chinumbu is sworn in on May 29 as president of Nigeria, that may signal an end to democracy. I think that's what Festus Kiyamo is holding on to. Why would uh, Chinumbu being sworn in uh, signal an end to democracy? He also took objection to Dati Ahmed raising the question about Section 134.2 of the uh, uh, Constitution, which deals with, you know, uh, FCT Abuja, whether or not for a person to be president of Nigeria must win 25% uh, in Abuja. Um, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu got 18.8% from the federal capital territory. But that's one of the major matters before the court, and it is for the court to determine that. So this is why it is important that all parties concerned should just calm down and allow the judicial process to take its course. However, Kiyamo has received a response in equal measure from the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council and also from uh, Dr. Yusuf uh, Tanko and other spokespersons uh, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, party, including General Unifadi. And what they have told him clearly is that uh, he's joking and that nobody should take his joke uh, seriously. And that, uh, you know, Kiyamo is a known uh, rabu rouser who is just trying to impress uh, his masters. Well, the election is over, gentlemen. Can we tone down the right up? And in any case, the DSS is not going to just act on the basis of a petition from a partisan party. This is not the first time Kiyamo will write a petition. Nothing came out of the last petition that he wrote to the DSS. Because the DSS as an institution will not want to be seen to be taking directives or dictates from, you know, a partisan political figure, uh, you know, trying to do his own job. And the election is over. Uh, uh, we recall that Festus Kiyamo is a minister of state for labor. That ministry, that assignment is still pending. Now that the election is over and it's petition time, it's, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, tribunal time, can uh, Minister Kiyamo please pay more attention to his primary assignment? And all persons who may be tempted to incite the public against the Nigerian state should refrain from doing so. That is very important. Uh, I, I think it's Lagbaja, the famous uh, Afrobeat Nigerian musician. I think he had a song that says, Kulu, 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 Tempa, o, Kulu, Tempa. That's what I'll say to all the political parties. At first, there's something that binds all of us in common which is our roots. We are all Nigerians in the first place. The reason why we are having these arguments back and forth is because we share something in common. 
We are all Nigerians. And that supersedes anything and any other thing where we are from in the country. It's immaterial to the fact that we are all Nigerians. We'll have varying ideas, but we'll talk about our varying ideas with objectivity and the truth. As simple as that. So we want everybody to cool things down because after all is said and done, after the case goes to court and the court makes a ruling, we'll still have to come together in this country. But that will be after justice has been done as regards the electoral process, which will be done in the courts. Mr. Kiambo that wrote a petition to DSS, I laugh a lot because Mr. Kiambo pretty much went out there to school the television presenter, and, and I think it's not fair the way politicians treat journalists. You talk down at them, it's not fair. You pretty much were there schooling the uh, uh, presenter, and the next thing you went ahead to do all the things you complained against. Mr. Kiamo is his son, senior advocate of Nigeria. But on this section 25, Dr. Abati, do you know, despite the fact that case is in court, he gave an illegal opinion on section 25 right there on TV on a case that is already in court. He gave a legal opinion on, uh, no, not section 25, this 25% in Abuja thing. 134. 134. He gave a legal opinion. They are empirical facts. Fact check me. When he was asked on the issue, he gave a legal opinion, knowing fully well that the case is sub judice, like lawyers say, and it's already in court. And as a senior advocate of Nigeria, gave a legal opinion of a case that is in court on television. So who is going to charge him for that? Who's going to charge him for that? Then he says about the things that Ibaba Ahmed did say. You know, the truth has to be said. Any decision that is taken by the court, democracy will not fade off in Nigeria. We will go through our path and will become better. But what we call on the judiciary to do is to ensure justice reigns. That's just all. And one too many times, those that are going to court are saying they want to challenge the process. And they have extensive things there in their petition to challenge. But in also being objective, and please, for the love of mercy, in also being objective, let us also balance things out. Apart from what I have pointed out, what Dasi Baba made and said, and say it will not be a reign at the end of democracy in Nigeria, even if the court rules in favor of anybody. But in also being objective, Mr. Festus Kiyamu forgets the tweets of his very good friend and brother, Bayon Onuga, and Mr. FFK, that are causing ethnic tension and ethnic beating in the country. He also forgot to see MC Oluomo's message that it was a prediction and a threat that came to pass in Lagos. So that's where the hypocrisy is when we are talking about things on the national sphere. I know politicians will say the things they want to say. They want to make arguments and everything. But we need to cool it down. And we also need to be just as statesmen. Because at the end of it, after all is said and done, we will have a country to build and we'll come together. The